Now I've got to be honest, every time I see Boeing and NASA in the same sentence, I've just got to wonder, what is Boeing doing wrong this time? Well, get this, Boeing's first astronaut mission for NASA won't even lift off this year. So what exactly went wrong with Starliner this time? Surely NASA has finally realized that the Starliner is a disaster, hasn't it? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The company had been aiming to launch Crew Flight Test, the first ever crewed mission of its Starliner capsule toward the ISS sometime in December. But according to NASA and Boeing representatives announced on August 25th, technicians need more time to address a few issues identified on OFT2, or Orbital Flight Test 2, an uncrewed jaunt to the ISS that Starliner made in May. As a result, currently we're targeting a launch date as early as February of 2023, Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, said during a call with reporters today. Worse, NASA and Boeing will likely shoot for early February, he and others on the call added, identifying that time frame as a relatively open window in an otherwise busy stretch for ISS operations. Like SpaceX, Boeing holds a multi-billion dollar deal to fly astronauts to and from the ISS for NASA. SpaceX is already fully up and running, having launched four operational crewed missions to the orbiting lab using its Dragon capsule and Falcon 9 rocket. But Boeing with a larger investment, which comes out to nearly twice that of SpaceX's, isn't even there yet. The company notched a big milestone with OFT2, an uncrewed shakeout cruise that showed Starliner can get safely to and from the ISS. But the six-day flight did not go perfectly smoothly, as the newly announced CFT delay attests. Mark Nappy, Vice President and Program Manager for Starliner at Boeing, said during a media teleconference that a review of the data from the OFT2 mission, which is now wrapping up, shows the need for a so minimal amount of changes to the Starliner that will fly the CFT mission, a process he called fine-tuning, and which he said the company expected from the earlier test flight. That work, though, ruled out any chance of a CFT mission this year. We had schedules that supported late 22, the December time frame for a CFT mission. There were areas that we needed to go do a little bit more work on the systems. We plugged that into the plan, and that's what moved us out by about a month, uh, five weeks or so. That work addresses problems that came up during the OFT-2 flight, including orbital maneuvering and attitude control, or OMAC, thrusters that shut down during the orbital insertion burn. Nappy said some debris-related conditions likely caused those thrusters to shut down, but later noted that is their best estimate since the OMAC thrusters are in a service module that burns up on re-entry and is not recovered. We do not know where the debris may have came from. The bottom line is that looks to be the leading root cause, and we've eliminated that by looking at the CFT vehicle and making sure that there's absolutely no debris in the system. Several reaction control thrusters also shut down during the mission, which Nappy said was likely due to low inlet pressures and can be addressed with tweak and, and uh, of timing and tolerances and software. High pressures in a thermal control loop noticed in the mission were linked to filters that engineers determined are not needed and can be removed. A guidance system on the spacecraft called VESTA, or VESTA, worked well but generated more data than the flight software could handle, requiring changes to the software. Work on the Starliner vehicle that will fly CFT, which includes the same crew module that flew the original OFT mission back in December of 2019, is still on track, Nappy said. That crew module will be mated to its service module in November. Can we have uh, good plans that get us to support that date in February. Notably, Boeing is not planning to make major changes to the valves in the service module for CFT. Those valves suffered corrosion before an OFT2 launch attempt in August 2021, when ambient moisture reacted with nitrogen tetroxide propellant that seeped through the valve, creating nitric acid that corroded the aluminum elements of the valve. Gosh, it's been a year already, wow. Anywho, <laughs> just taking a quick stroll down memory lane just now. For the May OFT2 launch, Boeing took steps to purge moisture from the valves and regularly opened them to confirm they worked. We feel we have a good short-term solution 
that we are enhancing slightly for CFT because it's it's being implemented during the build and not after the vehicle was built. So we're flying that same configuration on CFT. Boeing is continuing to study long-term changes that would involve sealing off the valves for moisture and replacing aluminum in them. But our goal is to uh, get it done as soon as possible, he said. But added the schedule was tight to have it ready in time for the first operational Starliner mission, tentatively scheduled for the fall of 2023. A CFT mission to the International Space Station docked there for eight days would have to work around an incredibly busy schedule there in the first half of the year, said Joel Montalbano, NASA ISS program manager. By early March, there will be a Soyuz Crew Exchange followed by the Crew-5, Crew-6 Exchange of Crew Dragon missions. Also on the manifest are Cargo Dragon, Cygnus, and Progress missions and Axiom Space's AX-2 private astronaut mission. He said, though, that flying CFT will be a priority so that the vehicle can be certified in time for its first operational mission in the fall. Montalbano added that he expects to start discussions with the Russian space agency Roscosmos in the fall to update the existing integrated crew agreement signed in July to exchange seats between Soyuz and commercial crew vehicles. The current agreement covers one exchange a year between Soyuz and Crew Dragon in 2022, 23, and 2024. The modification, he said, would include Starliner and extend the agreement beyond 2024. The goal is long-term agreement. Every time we fly, we have a cosmonaut on either SpaceX or Boeing, and then an astronaut on the Soyuz spacecraft. If all goes well with CFT, Starliner will be cleared to start flying operational astronaut missions for NASA. The seven flights left on Boeing's manifest for NASA will be it for Starliner if the company doesn't find another customer. Unlike SpaceX, Boeing won't be getting any more flights ordered by NASA to shuttle its astronauts to and from the space station. Boeing has stated its plan to sell spare seats on NASA crewed flights to interested parties, but nothing has been announced as to who that might be. Another possible form of revenue would be to partner with one of the upcoming commercial space stations in development. For now, though, NASA is determined to support Boeing and Starliner for operational use as they believe redundancy is essential for the commercial crew program's success. Any partnership with a future commercial space station is still a decade away. After all, SpaceX is far ahead of Boeing and it's hard to catch up. Let me know what you think about Boeing's latest decision in the comment section down below. That's it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.